Hello, very welcome back to our channel. And today we are going to talk about a special topic that is a phase noise. So as the name suggests, it is noise related to the phase of a signal. So how we basically understand this phase noise is the topic of today's module. So if you are new to our channel and if you have missed our previous sessions on various types of noise. So we encourage you to refer back to those earlier modules and come back again to enjoy this particular module on the phase noise. So basically phase noise is random fluctuations in the phase of a waveform. So for example, you see here, there is this sinusoidal waveform, whether you consider a blue line or the red line, so we assume we are talking about the red line, which has a periodic sinusoidal waveform. And it has got the amplitude and it has got the phase with respect to time. So for example, phase of this sine wave, a red signal at this point in time is zero. Here it is 90 degree. Here it is 180 degree. Here it is 270 degree. And here it is 360 degree or in terms of pi, here it is zero, here it is pi, here it is two pi, okay? And in the middle, this is pi by two at this point, and here it is three pi by two. So in radians or in degree, we can understand the phase of a signal. So when the phase noise is considered in this sinusoidal signal, which is an ideal initially, and when we talk there is a phase modulation of this signal. So the phase of this signal gets shifted from this point to this point. So the blue is now can be interpreted as a phase modulated sinusoidal signal. So phase has been changed by the noise of this signal. And we need to understand uh, what this phase noise is. As, as, as I said, this is a random fluctuations in the phase of a waveform. How about in a frequency domain? In a frequency domain, you can see this representative graph. We see that you got the signal at a center frequency, let's say 100 megahertz right here. And in case of a red sinusoidal waveform, which is ideal without any phase modulation or phase noise, in a frequency domain, this red waveform should be represented by a single pulse with the amplitude and without any phase, it should be a simple steady straight line like this. But if there is a little bit phase and that gets attacked on the red signal, then your signal is blue, for example, and the phase has been changed and that representation can be seen by a side bands here. You can see that on the left and right of this straight line, you got the two side bands. If the phase noise is much more, the signal is more and more corrupted through the phase noise, we can take a look at this signal now. In the center, you have this sine wave carrier signal, but in the left and right side of this waveform, you've got these kind of shapes and your frequency domain representation of that signal, which with the phase noise will be shown like this, okay? so. More the noise, more the side bands to the left and right side of the central carrier and farther away from the central carrier. Less is the phase noise. It means these side bands will be very close to the central frequency that is the carrier of a signal. Okay. So in case of uh, this, this is a frequency domain representation. This is a time domain representation. So in frequency domain, we call this quantity of phase noise. In a time domain, we refer this quantity, which alters the perfect periodicity of a waveform. And we call that phase noise in time domain as a jitter. So remember that in time domain, we call it jitter. In a frequency domain, we call it phase noise. So you can see that in case of a strong phase noise, as you can see right here to the right and to the left, if there are some other signals for which the frequency spectrum is right shown here and the amplitude of that signal or a power of that signal is small as compared to the main signal. So 
in the presence of a phase noise of the main signal, your signal of other frequency component of a signal gets hidden. So you see that the phase noise is above this signal level. So this signal is hard to detect in the case of frequency domain. You can see that, okay? So radio frequency engineers call it phase noise. Digital design engineers call it jitter. Here you can see that uh, example of uh, phase noise. Uh, you can see that this is a one-sided representation of a uh, phase noise of a signal. So for example, we are measuring it using, let's say a measuring equipment spectrum analyzer. And right here in this, in this position, there is central carrier frequency and only one side, that is the right side of the phase noise is shown right here. So this is your phase noise. And there are three signal carrier frequencies right here, right here and right here are also shown but your main carrier frequency is right here. So this graph is basically representing this right side of this graph actually, okay? So this is how you can actually measure the phase noise and uh, we'll see that the unit of measuring the phase noise. Let us explore a few more details about the phase noise. So why is phase noise important? Because when we build an oscillator circuit, we generate a linear, harmony waveform for example this perfect periodic sign a subtle waveform so in an ideal oscillator we would expect the circuit of oscillator to generate such a periodic waveform which is perfect and without any phase modulation in it in a frequency domain we see that all signals all signals power will be at the cent will be at the single frequency that is for example 100 megahertz we don't have any sideband to the right and to the left. And we just see that the straight line in the middle, that is our signal. And all the power of a signal is at that frequency. It is concentrated in that frequency. However, we are living in a practical world. So real oscillators in that case will have a phase modulated noise component. So there is also the amplitude modulated component of this waveform and the phase modulated component of this waveform. So we are talking about the phase modulation as I described in a previous module. So when you got, when your waveform gets corrupted through the phase noise, you, what you have is this kind of two side bands right here. So basically phase noise spreads the power of the signal to the adjacent frequencies resulting in the noise side bands. This is shown right over here. On the y-axis, you see the signal power expressed in decibels, and in the x-axis, you got the frequency. So Fc represents your signal frequency, which is your carrier, and right here, all the signal's power is concentrated at this frequency if there is no phase noise. However, if there is a phase noise, as you can see from this graph also, you got the two adjacent side bands with the frequencies Fc minus Fm and Fc plus Fm, where this is called as basically the modulated signal of the of the of the oscillator. So you got the upper side band to the right of the carrier, you got the lower side band to the left of the carrier. And frequency Fm is the modulation frequency of the modulating signal, which is the phase noise component, and Fc is the carrier frequency, which is the signal of your interest. So mathematically, we can very simply represent this uh, concept. Uh, when we say that we want to understand a noise-free signal, we see that V of T, that is the signal with respect to time, is given as A cos of 2 pi F naught T. It, A is the amplitude of the signal, cos it is a cosine waveform, or it can be sinusoidal waveform also, and it has a frequency of 2 phi F naught where F0 is the frequency of the signal and T is the time. If there is a phase noise added to this mathematical expression of the signal, the signal with the phase noise then will be V of T equal to A cos 2 pi F0 T plus P of T. P of T represent extra phase noise added to the signal and which is basically altering your periodicity of the 
signal, which is called jitter. And in frequency domain, you can have this kind of sidebands, this kind of sidebands. So basically, when you talk about oscillator phase noise, it also includes low frequency flicker noise and may also include white noise. So remember, oscillator phase noise, it means it has a component of low frequency, which is flicker, flicker noise, one over F noise, and also high uh, broadband noise, which is white noise. So we got these two noise covers in our previous models. So we encourage you to do not miss that one. So how to uh, express or measure this phase noise? So it's basically represent uh, in the units of dBc per hertz. It means in a one hertz bandwidth, your noise is measured relative to the carrier which is centered at a certain offset from the carrier. For example, your carrier is centered at 100 megahertz right here. So you take an offset from this frequency of 100 megahertz. Let's say you take a one kilohertz or 100 kilohertz, uh, one kilohertz offset. So 100 kilohertz is your center frequency and one kilohertz offset from the carrier will be one not one right here. 101 megahertz. So at this frequency, you take the one hertz bandwidth at this point, and in that one hertz frequency range, you measure the phase noise, which can be having a unit of dBc. C stands for carrier, and dB is the decibel per hertz. Okay. For example, phase noise of minus 80 dBc per hertz at an offset of 10 kilohertz and phase noise of minus 95 dBc per hertz at an offset of 100 kilohertz. So when you talk about phase noise, if you want to tell someone how much is your phase noise in an oscillator signal, so you can basically tell this sentence, okay, I, have, I got my circuit oscillator phase noise of minus 80 dBc per hertz at offset of 10 kilohertz. Like I said, from 100 megahertz, you have a carrier and 10, mega, uh, 10 kilohertz from this offset. For example, at this point, you take a one hertz bandwidth and you will see, you see that here it is minus 90 actually. So, or minus 80, just what you see here. Okay, let's say it is minus 80, just below uh, or above that. And that frequency, uh, you say that this is the value of your offset, okay? Value of your phase noise. So there are basically uh, two instruments that comes in the market to measure the phase noise. One is called spectrum analyzer right here. You actually can get the measurement of the uh, phase noise from there and you get the value as you can see that. And from the uh, carrier, Carrier will be at this frequency, and from this at from this frequency away from this frequency at a offset, let's say one kilohertz, ten kilohertz, hundred kilohertz, or even one megahertz, you measure in a one hertz bandwidth what how much is your phase noise. Second instrument is phase noise analyzer, which also gives you there are pros and cons you can refer to. So hope you enjoyed this video about basic understanding about what phase noise is, what it is how it is measured and um, uh, where to see that and how his noise is represented in time domain and frequency domain. So if you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to your channel and share this video with other for wider range, uh, for the wider reach uh, to help others and uh, stay tuned for more engaging contents like this in the field of microelectronics and nanotechnology and the research thereof. Till then, wish you all a very happy learning.